today uh, with a very, very useful uh, uh, debug, or not debug, but uh, quicker kernel always. Uh, make sure I don't have the same variables. We're going to be working with a very useful module today, which is list manipulation module two. Um, so kind of, we learned last time how to extract data from a list, but now we're going to kind of go a little bit deeper into kind of this list manipulation or kind of extracting data, selecting different sets of data, rounding, sorting, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So let me make a random list, my favorite function, random variate. I'm going to do a normal distribution. distribution. I'm going to have it, say a 10, center around 10, standard deviation of 10, not very uh, precise. List of 500, and let's take a peek at this. Going, going, and just like we've done before, you could look, you know, now we're histogram experts. So if I look at my R list, just like what we might anticipate. So uh, let's look, a little wonky because again, only 500 data sets, data points. So let's see how I could kind of play around and um, manipulate and look at this list. So again, we could take the max of a list. We know how to do that last time. But let's look a little bit um, do min, a little bit deeper into this data set instead of just max, min, mean, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. One way I could look at my data set, so if I look at it right here, original one, I could also sort. So when you sort, it automatically sorts from least uh, to greater. So lowest values to higher values. I can also sort oppositely. So sort by greater. Sort by fewer. I think it's less. Yep. So you can sort your list that way. Let's say I instead, so that's a nice kind of function to have again if you're just kind of looking um, to sort your data or kind of visualize your data in a different way uh, and just sort your data set. Let's say I wanted to have all of the negative values. How can I do that? Well, I'm going to use a function called select. So select allows me to grab and select different values from my list. So I have select, I have my list, I want my numbers that are greater than two, and then it'll give me those values from my list. So if I look at here, if I select from my R list, I want the numbers that are greater, or actually less than zero, just like I said, and that's it. So there, it gives me all of the values that are less than zero. If I want to see the values that are greater than zero, I can go here. I don't know why I put double zero. But if I want the values that are greater than 10, this. If I want the values that are greater than 30, this is shorter, greater than 50, nothing. So a nice way, again, to kind of look at that data set uh, and grab uh, different values. I could also from my R list, I could also take that R list and I could round it. So I could round it to the nearest integer. I could round it to the nearest 0 0.1. I could round it to the nearest 10, nearest 100, <laughs> et cetera, et cetera, uh, et cetera. So that's how you could also kind of round lists as well. Now, let's go back and look at my select function here. So let's see if the number is greater than 3. So let's say I wanted to look at my, uh, let's look at a certain value. Actually, let's do numbers greater than five. How about greater than 10? So let's look at this first value. Let's say I was super interested in this first value, 12.76, but I don't know where this occurs in my list. Let's say that's important. One of the ways that I could look for it is position. So I could do position in my uh, R list. Actually, let's look at the, Let's look at position. Let's look at the syntax. Position. So I need a list, and then I want to see where this values occur. So you can see here, for B, it's going to give you all the values where this occurs at. So if I want to see, I want the position of our list where this value occurs. So I could just copy this here. Two. What about the maybe the 10th element? Where does that pop up? 21. What about the 34th element, 68, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So now you can kind of see if I want to round, let's say I want to round this value to the nearest one. I want to see how many times, actually, let's see, I want to find the position where 14 occurs. It occurs here, 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 and here. Or I could look at this 
And let's say I'm not interested in the positions, but I'm interested how many times. Count how many times in my list 10 occurs. 16 times. So you can see if I do 14 here, 19 times, I could also find this the same way looking at length as well. So again, count, round, select, position, they're all really, really useful functions when you're looking through data sets and lists uh, in order to grab uh, essential pieces of data um, and to be able to manipulate it and again, plot. That's all that we're working with here. So when you're importing the data, there's lots of ways you can kind of rearrange it. You don't have to kind of basically export a perfect data file that you just automatically print out. That's not how, or that you automatically convert into a graph and then, you know, publish. There's a lot of dis, uh, data, or not data manipulation, but list manipulation, extracting data, um, modifying, analyzing data to make it basically readable for your uh, audience. So uh, next time, we're going to get into another kind of cool plotting function, which is uh, basically manipulate slash animate function uh, in Mathematica. So you're going to animate and create kind of dynamic and creative plot. So uh, yeah, that's it. I'll talk to you all next time in the next video. So let me know if you have any questions about list manipulation. Uh, and next time, we'll get into some fun animated functions with sliders. Super fun. All right. Thanks. I'll see you all next time. Bye.